Hey, we back at it. It's Jen Sports Corner. I am your host, Jen. This is my co-host, Ryan, and we back at you for week three of the NFL season. Uh, before we get into it, like, subscribe, share the video, get the good word out there because we, could, we put out good content. So, uh, you know, join us. That being said, um, I want to hop right into Thursday night's game between the Jets and um, fuck, they were so bad. Who did the Jets play? The Patriots. <laughs> okay, and the Patriots. Oh man, that was a beatdown, man. What did you think about that game? The score, and then we'll get into Aaron Rodgers. Um, man, man, they they dominated those boys, man. I mean, they made them literally look like boys, right? Um. Man, they, they the defense, the Jets, man, they just look so dominant. Um, they played extremely well. They were flying around out there, um, getting sacks, but and um, you know, Aaron Rodgers, of course, dialed in. But you know, the score just showed um I felt like Rodgers got some swag back. He looks starting to look like himself again. Um, yeah. getting comfortable. But um, but yeah, man, they they look good. And uh, I knew it was only a matter of time because, as we talked about before, preseason reps matter. And, you know, you got to knock off the rust. So, um, yeah, I really like what I saw from the Jets. But um, the Patriots stinking up the joints, no surprise to me. The Patriots, look, they're rebuilding. You have Gerard Mayo as the new head coach, former player under Bill Belichick, very high-level linebacker. He was a first-round pick. Maybe I think it was late in the, the first round, maybe 30th pick. And um, he's taking over the reins, and he has that defense playing very, very well. They use a lot of yeah. smoke mirrors. They use a lot of disguises up front. They move people around. Uh, mind you, they they got rid of Judon. So Judon's going. That was their best pass rusher. And they have a rookie who's pretty solid. But beyond that, they don't really have a lot of talent on that team. And on the offensive side, Jacoby Brissett, serviceable bat, uh, quarterback, but he got – Hit so much yesterday, man. He he, man, that was that was rough to watch. They were on him. They were they they were locking down the receivers. Hunter Henry was Hunter Henry and Ramon Stevenson were were the only people who were viable. And even even them, they they they're not going to carry the team. Mm. Um, because that Jets defense is for real. Sauce Gardner, uh, leading that secondary, they 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 can take out your best guy and make it very, very difficult for you to find real estate in the passing game. And then in the rushing game, you have, was it Quentin Richardson? Uh, Quentin something. You have, you, have, uh, you have big uglies up on that front and they do a really good job of clogging up uh, rushing lanes. They they had some problems with, with Ramon Stevenson though. They had problems with him. But mm -hmm. behind that, the Patriots couldn't do anything. Um, so you, you know you flip you flip over to the Jets and you look at the offense. Aaron Rodgers, he looked healthy, he looked fast, he looked willing to run. He's not trying to take big hits, we know that, but he looked willing to run. And there was one play where he was sitting in the pocket and um, he he sidestepped and he pushed off of his left foot. I don't know which one was hurt. Maybe it was the right. Doesn't matter. He pushed off of that left foot with full confidence, got out of that sack, and he was just throwing dimes all night. It looked like MVP level Aaron Rodgers. So that was that's kind of what I saw. What what did you see? Um yeah, man. Like I said, that's exactly the same thing, man. I mean, you saw him getting back to his old self. You know, it's a new offense, so. You know, he's really got to get comfortable out there, man. You know, get to know the chemistry down with his receivers and just everyone out there. So, you know, you have to give him a little bit, a couple games in, give him a lot of practice. I mean, listen, he had a tough first game. You know, you, your first game, you're putting him up against the Niners, man. Come on, you're doing that man dirty. So, you know, you give him a couple games in, now he's looking like he's starting to feel comfortable. He's looking like himself. So I saw a much better Rodgers. I saw, you know – just looking comfortable in the offense. And, uh, yeah, I liked what I saw. I think they're going to – I truly think they're going to have a good year. Same, same. Um, I, I think that – hold off – you know, people can hold off the talk of Super Bowl, but they are a contender. And then if they get Hassan yeah. Reddick back, then that pushes them to a different spot than we thought they could be at. Oh, for sure. Oh. Yeah, Hassan Reddick's definitely a different animal when it comes to that pass rush. 
Yeah, it was very if, if I was a Jets fan, I would be very encouraged. Not even just encouraged, I would be excited because he showed yeah. you all the things you thought you were going to see in 2023. You're seeing them in 2024. Yeah. Yeah, man, and, definitely. And mind you, that Patriots defense, while they don't have superstars on there, they've been making it very, very difficult to throw the first uh especially that first game. Uh yeah. They they uh they either upset somebody or they they really made it miserable to pass against them and he shredded them. Yeah. Um I forget what team that they won that first game. I don't remember who it was, but I know they did win that game. Yeah, I thought I thought they won that game. Um but it, it just shows you the level of preparation that they have at, just as a squad. So this was no yeah. push over because look, yeah, the Bengals, they beat them 16-10, and the Bengals only had 10 points. Now, mind you, they're coming out of the preseason and they're not getting as much work as they should, but they ran the ball all over them, 25 carries, 120 yards for Ramon Stevenson and a touchdown. And Jamar Chase, six catches, 62 yards. Pretty quiet. Joe Burrow, 21 of 29 for 164 yards, but no touchdowns, no interceptions, just quiet. So they really kept them at bay. Yeah. You know, this This is – no walk in the park and they made them look like they didn't belong on the field. So, you know, very impressive, you know, kudos to them. And, um, you know, before we move into the Eagles and the Raiders, let's go ahead and look at the NFL slate for week three and go through these games uh, briefly. So week three, first game on the docket. Let's, let's go where we at. Week three, uh, first game was Jets Patriots. Second game would be Giants and Browns. Giants are six and a half point underdogs on the road in Cleveland. And the uh the point total is 38.5. Uh, how do you see this game playing out, man? Sunny, sunny skies, too. <laughs> oh man. Uh who is the other team again? I'm sorry, the Giants and who? And exactly the Browns. The Browns. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think the Brown, I think the doo-doo Browns got this game, man. Uh, the Giants are just bad, bro. I mean. As much as I would love to put Malik Willis, I mean not Malik Willis. Wow, that that's how much I think of this team. Uh, Malik Neighbors out there on the you know on my fantasy lineup, man. I, I don't know how much confidence I have in him this week because I mean the Browns. Let's be honest, the Browns may not be the greatest, but they got a nasty D up there, bro. Like you got um, Miles Garrett, you got Denzel, you got Denzel Ward, like. We got some players up there, man. So, I mean, I really like the Browns in this game. They just got a better defense. Um, I mean, they still got some players on offense, man. Um, you know, you still got, you know, Deshaun Watson. You got a Mary Cooper. You know, you still got some players. So, I feel like the Browns are a better team in this one. What about you? I completely agree. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game like they predicted with the point spread. But I got the Browns winning a, a uh, defensive game. Yeah. So moving on to the next game, we have the Packers on the road playing in Tennessee. Tennessee Titans favored by three points. Uh, same uh, point total, 38 and a half. Sunny skies, 89 degrees in Nashville. What, what, what you got, man? Um, Based off the team, I honestly got the Packers, man. The Packers just are a better overall team. Like, you know, Tennessee's, I don't know what they're doing. They're in rebuild mode or what they're doing. But I just know, looking at the team, I mean, I got to go Packers. What about you? I'm going to go Titans here. I think that Titans. The, the Titans defense is uh, stingy. And their offense is good, it's good enough to put up 17 to 20 points. But that Titans defense. Nasty. I, yeah, they're stingy. I just haven't seen enough of Malik Willis to get a – a feel for what he's going to be like versus the right. team. So we saw him in week two mm -hmm. and you know, he, he did it. He did a good job. He did a good job yeah. um, mm -hmm. against the Colts, but it was a 16, 10 game. He didn't, he didn't do, he did what you needed when you needed. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I think exactly. he had like a run here or there when I was looking at the highlights, you know, Josh Jacobs they gave him the ball. 30, they gave him the ball a lot. I think they gave him the oh ball God. 32 times. Yeah, that's that's wow. Um that, that that number can't be right. Is it that it's that 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 would be crazy if they gave him the ball 32 times, man. Um, didn't we get didn't we get Barkley the ball like 30 times recently? 
Um, I didn't look at the, the stats. I don't know how many times he told he he got he got it a lot though. He he yeah, I know, yeah. got it for a lot. So yeah, Josh Jacobs, thirty two carries, one hundred fifty one yards. Man, they they were you knew what their game plan was coming in. They knew yeah, yeah. Malik Willis. He had a good game because he didn't have to do much. He was twelve for fourteen, fourteen attempts, twelve completions, one hundred twenty two yards, ten yards. What ten yards to pass almost, and one touchdown. So that's against the Colts. The Colts, solid defense. He took what he was given to him, and they got out of there with the win. They leaned on that run game. But um, that Titans defense is, is stingier than the, the Colts. I don't think that 16 to 10, 10 gets it done. So I'm going to go with the – the um, I mean, the uh, Titans right now. That's, I didn't know – I've been paying too much attention to that. Paying too much attention to the Titans. So I didn't know their defense was like that. Yeah, I didn't either. I was just looking at some um some footage, some highlight films past couple of days. So I've been getting wise to them. So that's that. So um let us know what you think about the Titans Packers. Next game, Bears at the Colts. Uh Colts favored by one point. This is a pick'em game. Uh total uh point spread is 43 and a half uh in the dome. Um I I am going with the Colts here. Uh, who are you going with? Yeah, I got the same. I just feel like uh, Anthony Richardson. He's been he's been playing pretty good. Um, yeah. And their and their defense. I think their defense is pretty solid. So, see, I think this is going to be a very co close game, and I I I'm with them on the spread and the point total, uh, even at home because that Bears defense that Bears defense is for real. But oh, yeah. Caleb, um, what's his what's his last name? Caleb Williams. So Williams, Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. yeah, Caleb Williams, he's growing. He'll get better. But I think that the Colts, they're a solid enough defense that they won't allow him to have a breakout game, I don't think. Yeah. They'll, they'll play. The Colts just made it, made life tough for the, what was it, Titans the other week? Or, or, yeah, tight. I think it was the Titans. Yeah, yeah they, they made life rough for them. That was a close game. Obviously, it's a divisional game, but – uh, I, I like the the Colts in the close game. Uh, next game, Texans on the road versus the Vikings. Texans are favored by two points in the Dome in Minneapolis, uh, 46 and a half point total. Who you got? This is a tough one. Um, Minnesota, man, they've been playing very well lately, not having, you know, their rookie quarterback in there. And, hey, it might be for the better good. You know, Sam Darnold has been, you know, he's been balling out. Um I gotta go Texans, man. Yeah, I just I just like CJ Stroud, man. I like what he's doing. Um, you know, with the Texans, you got Diggs, you got all those guys. And that defense, man, um, Will Anderson, bro. He is he's a star out there, man. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Yeah, and I'm I completely agree with you. I, I have the same take. And I think he will be a difference maker in the, in this game. Yeah. He's gonna make Sam Donald's life very uncomfortable. Yeah. Exactly. Um, next game on the docket, we have the LA Chargers playing in Pittsburgh, one o'clock game. Steelers favored by three points. Over under is 34 and a half points. I'm going with the Chargers here. I, I don't think that Pittsburgh is going to beat the Chargers. No. Nah. Chargers, haven't the Chargers been playing somewhat well? They have. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely. I definitely go in Chargers on that one. Yeah. Um still have a good defense, but the Chargers, JK Dobbins, he's having a really good time uh running the, the rock behind that offensive line. He had a, a lot of yards last week. And um Quentin Johnson is quickly becoming Justin Herbert's favorite target. And there, there was one play in particular that he threw to Quentin Johnson for a touchdown where they had a trip set. They had three wide receivers on the right, and they had Quentin Johnson isoed on the left. And anybody that knows football knows that if you have trips to the right, you have whoever is your wide receiver on the left who's isoed up, that's you're 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 making that matchup for a reason. So they they had a good matchup on the left with Quentin, Quentin Johnson, um, good height. And uh, he got the one on one. And he won. He 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 beat the dude, and, and that was an easy touchdown. So, and then he had another one on a slant route. It was a crossing route, 
not a slant route, a crossing route over the middle. And you can see Herbert waiting the whole time and boom, easy touchdown. So they're finding ways to scheme him into uh, good opportunities and they're cashing in. So I think they're him and uh, McConkley can, can't get his name right. He's a rookie. He's also, he can take the top off of the defense. So they, they got some weapons, man. They, they sleeping on the chargers. They are not war beaters, but um, Denver, the Steelers, the, the Panthers of the world, they're not giving the Chargers their respect in the media. They're going to go in there, and I think they're going to go in there and take that dub. So yeah. that's that game. Uh, next game is Denver playing in Tampa. One o'clock game. Tampa Bay Buccaneers favored by six and a half points. Over under is 40 and a half points. What you thinking, man? Um, well, let's see. Doesn't Baker Mayfield have the highest QBR in the NFL right now? So, uh, so. he's he's balling out. So, I mean, I got to go Tampa. And the Broncos just aren't that good. Yeah, I, I'm completely there. Um, I think they cover the spread, too. Next game yeah. on the docket, we have the Miami Dolphins without Tua playing in Seattle in that stadium, 405 game. Seahawks favored by four and a half points. Over under is 41 and a half points. I'm going with the Seahawks here to cover the spread. And um, I, I see the game being like 27-23 Seahawks, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I got I got the Hawks too, man. I feel like um, you know, not having two out there, it's it's a problem. So you, when you don't have a quarterback, it makes a difference. And Geno Smith, he he can ball, man. You got DK over there and everyone. So I like the Hawks. Yeah. Next game we have is Baltimore Ravens versus the Dallas Cowboys. Ravens favored by one point on the road. Over under is forty seven and a half points in Arlington. At AT and T Stadium, four twenty five game. What you got, man? I got the. I hate to say it. I think the Cowboys girls might win this game. <laughs> or am I crazy? Wait, what do you think? Like, I, I don't know. Like, just like I, the Ravens really haven't been showing me much lately. Like, I understand we talked yeah. about preseason, you know, all that, but I don't know, man. Like, it's it's a I, tough one. It's a tough yeah. one. It can go either way, I feel like, but I think yeah. I think Dallas is gonna pull it off. I'm gonna I, I'm picking Baltimore, but it's truly a coin flip game for me. I'm I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Uh they can easily lose this game. Yeah, it can it can like you said, it's a coin flip. So yeah. And next game we got is uh San Francisco playing in LA. Uh we got a California game here at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. Uh 49ers favored by six and a half points over under is 43 and a half points. I think that the, I think the, the 49ers are going to get them without McCaffrey. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree because, um, I mean, who the Rams have, bro? Like they lost Puka, they lost Cooper. It's like who you got? Like, it's like, you know, like, I feel like the 49ers are just going to, dominate like i like i got iu just sitting in my lineup right now he's ready i think iu's gonna feast facts i got him in one of my lineups too yeah i mean the rams if they had cooper cup this would be a highly competitive game without him their offense just doesn't turn the same way as it, it usually does yeah uh, totally agree yeah, so next next game we have Detroit Lions versus the Arizona Cardinals, 425 game out in the desert. Lions are favored by three points on the road. Over under is 51 and a half points. What you thinking, man? I mean, this is the Cardinals played a very good game against, well, the Rams, but <laughs> they destroyed them. But they, like we were just talking about, they stink. So I got to go Lions, man. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going lines. Um, this is going to be a, a good game. It's I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Uh, you know, 51 and a half is it's predicted to be the high scoring game. Uh, I think the main difference here is the Arizona Cardinals. They don't have the defense in the same fashion as Detroit does. But make no mistake about it, Kyler Murray is back. The ACL is fully healed. He's past the 18 month mark, and you can see it when he's running around. Yeah. He had one play last week that. It looked like the old him, but it just – it looked like how do you stop that? So, yeah. 
you know, the way Mahomes runs around, he's he's really, really good. He's 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 got rings because of it. He can't do what Kyler Murray does running around. Kyler Murray's right. running around like he's running a four three eight again. That's hard to stop. And he's slinging yeah. it. Right wow. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. Damn, that's crazy. Well, that's what he ran at the combine. So, you know, and you see it, he's quick and he's fast. And he has a rocket. He he actually got drafted. Well, his rights were up to get drafted as Russell Wilson during his draft year by the MOB. So, like, the yeah. guy has a cannon. Yeah. So, you know, he – and so uh, Trey McBride, he's going to get some targets. Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously going to get a lot of, of targets and attention. Yeah. Um, he's a stud. Yeah. So once they take him out, then – Kyler Murray, he'll he'll get he'll he'll get his, but I just don't think it will be enough compared to Detroit. The Cardinals can't stop the run, and they are going to mm -hmm. feed the rock to David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs until their eyeballs fall out. So yeah. that's the way I see the game going. And then once they get the ground game going, then the play action with the Porter and Jameson Williams, uh, he he's stepping up and showing that okay, I had the first round pedig pedigree, and and here we are. And then you have St. Brown. There's too many weapons, in my opinion. It's going to be a, a good high-scoring game, but I'm picking Detroit here. Yeah. And the Sunday night game, last game on Sunday, Kansas City Chiefs playing at Atlanta in the Dome. Chiefs favored by three points, four, 46 and a half over under for the line. Uh, what do you have for that Sunday night game? Um, I mean, the Chiefs haven't really been blowing anyone do doors off lately, so. I mean, that, the way the Atlanta Falcons, bro, like they – I think they're for real, honestly. I think they're a solid team. But I, I just – Mahomes, man, I, I can't go against Mahomes. Like I feel like I got Mahomes in this game. I got the Chiefs. What do you feel? Yeah, this this is a, a tough one because Pacheco just got injured. He's out for six to eight weeks with the broken Oh. Pick. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So um I'm I'm actually going to go with the Dirty Birds, the Falcons here. Um yeah. I think that the Chiefs are a better team still, but I think that the Falcons, if they're playing at home and they're able to keep Kirk Cousins comfortable, because he when he has time, you see what he's able to do. Yeah. I, I don't think that I don't know if that Chiefs pass rush is gonna if they don't get a lead, I don't think that this defense operates the same way. And if they don't no. get a three, if they're able to pound a rock with B. John Robinson, use him like McCaffrey, which they said they're going to do. You got Drake London, you got Kyle Pitts now. I, I could see them getting the lead, and then they just run the rock and just wear their asses out. This this could be a a win for the Chiefs where they come in, they get the lead first, and they just they they cruise to like a seven or ten point win, or it could go like I think where um, they lose, if not possibly lose convincingly, because I don't see how they stop the run game. But that's yeah. how I see it. Yeah. 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 I, I completely honestly forgot that Pacheco wasn't in there. So, I mean, that's a big deal because Pacheco, he's he's a monster, bro. Like, he, that's – that's yeah. I mean, I got Falcons too. I got to change my pick on that one. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm right. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Let us know what you guys think in the comments, Falcons fans, Chiefs fans. And then we're going to move to the Monday night games before we get to the Raiders and the Eagles. So the first Monday night game uh, would be the Jacksonville Jaguars playing in Buffalo at Orchard Park, 730 on Monday, uh, 45 and a half over under. And then the Buffalo Bills are favored by five points. I, I'm going Bills here. Uh, they they don't have the receiving core, obviously, but they are spreading the ball around pretty well. Josh Allen is doing his thing, using his legs. And I think that defensively, they've been pretty, pretty strong. Having Von Miller come back with that pass rush ability has definitely boosted their defense to compensate for what they lost with, what's his name? Tredavious White. And uh, there's another piece that they lost as well, but he, they, they've been managing pretty well. And Jacksonville, they, they don't have world beaters over there. So I'm picking the the Bills by maybe like a field goal, maybe three, four points. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I completely agree. Every, your take pretty much sums up what I was going to say. <laughs> well, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the last game for Monday, and that's 
the Washington Commanders playing in Cincinnati versus the Bengals. Bengals are favored by seven and a half points. Heavy, heavy favorites. 815 on Monday night, eight, ABC, ESPN. Over under is 47 and a half points. What, what, who, what's your take on that? Um, I got the Bengals. I, I think they're 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 gonna they're gonna have a strong game. And we're gonna come out there, they're gonna wanna um who did they just play last? Let's see, who did the Bengals play last? Bengals played Kansas City. They lost by one point. They should not have lost that game either. No, 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 absolutely not. I agree. Um, but no, I feel like they're gonna wanna bounce back. So, you know, I've really uh yeah, that's a good bounce back game for them because you know the commanders are all right. They're you know they're you know they got a you know quarterback still learning back there, and then you got Joe Burrow, which is the more experienced quarterback. You know he's coming off an injury, you know from last year, but he's you know he, he's going to get his mojo back. So I think he'll uh, probably get it this game. I agree. So I, I don't have anything to add to that. That's pretty much my take as well. Uh, with that being said, let us know uh, what you think, um, if you agree with our picks, if you disagree with any of them, and um, before we go ahead and segue over to the Raiders and the Eagles. So let's go ahead and um, touch on the Eagles and Saints matchup. Uh, that's a big game coming up. You know, the Eagles, they have to bounce back. You know, that was a, a tough loss. But you have the Saints coming up. You're going on the road, 1 o'clock game. Uh, Saints are favored by two and a half points, and the over under is I think the second highest for this week, under the uh the Lions and the Cardinals game, which was fifty one and a half points. So our spread is forty nine and a half points. So that's the second highest total this week. Uh, what are some things that you've been thinking about with this game? Um, I'm kind of um. I know we're not a bend don't break defense, but I've really got some concerns of how we're going to contain Alvin Kamara. Bro. Seriously, that dude has been running his last game. Unfortunately, I was facing him in fantasy, you know, and you you know he went off. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. it, like, I just don't know how we're going to contain him the way. I, I don't. I'll be honest. I'm kind of worried about our defense. Like, it's it, it didn't. Impre like they, they are bent, don't break. They don't allow a lot of touchdowns. They do just shorten at the field goals, but they allow a lot of yards. And I see somewhere like a lot of breakdown in coverages. And like, like, I mean, I feel like we got the offense to possibly keep up with them because, you know, the Packers are good, you know, and Jordan with Jordan Love and we kept up with them. But I don't know, man, like the how hot the Saints are. I, I just I just feel like, you know, especially without A.J. Brown, like we're going to have problems with them, in my opinion. Oh, definitely. I think this is a very tough matchup. And to your point, we need more out of Bryce Huff. Yeah. So there was a, a clip and Baldy has his breakdowns. Brian, Bald Brian, Brian Baldinger uh, has his breakdowns on YouTube, Instagram. You just look him up. And he clipped up a play where – uh, either 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 was him or others. Either either way, the film's up there. He was getting stonewalled by the third string tight end, and yeah. I mean, yeah, I saw it. It, it. was it was bad. Like he has literally one stat, <laughs> and it's just a tackle. That's it. Like out of I understand it's only two games, but yeah, I mean, come on, we traded for you. Like, do something. Like, what, what happened that a pop from last year at the Jets? And what are you doing now? Right, right. So, you're going to need more out of him. But that – the secondary, they ha they're having growing pains. But but some of that is due to the fact that there's no pass rush. So, they're starting to yeah. take chances that they wouldn't normally take because they don't trust the pass rush to get home. That, that touchdown that C.J. Gardner-Johnson gave up, his eyes were in the backfield because the honestly, the way the pressure got in, it should have got home. And when I was mm -hmm. looking at it, I was like, oh, that's a sack. And then when it didn't get home, then you have the pass to the um the wide receiver that was running the either a post route or they were just running a crossing route across the middle of the field. He crossed his face, and then that was it. He got caught with his eyes in the cookie jar. But I think yeah. what he saw was. You have one or two people get close to Kirk Cousins. He's like, oh, this is sacks. So let me sit here on this route. And when, they, when it didn't happen, 
before he could react. By the time he turned around, it was too late. Yeah. So things like that, even Darius Slay on the last play, did he get caught out of position? Yes. But I think part of that was the entire game, especially that, especially that drive where you have no pre pressure being put on Kirk Cousins. I think I'm not going to speak for him, but it looked like somebody who was trying to do more than what their assignment was or do something different than their assignment. And then you gave up an easy out route. I, maybe if he wasn't trying to keep his eyes on Kirk cousin and, and really when you, when you, when the pass rush isn't getting there, one tip, one trick you can use is looking at the quarterback's eyes to see where they're looking. And that's where mm -hmm. you, where you fall, fall susceptible to the quarterback looking you off and then coming back and all that other stuff. So yeah. I think he got caught him as well with his eyes in the backfield or quote unquote the cookie jar and he lost track of uh whoever caught the ball for the touchdown yeah. uh, he certainly has the athleticism and the know-how and the smarts to get to that play I think that that's where the front seven and the secondary go hand in hand when one particularly when the pass rush isn't getting there I feel like it affects the secondary more than a bad secondary affects a pass rush if you have a good pass oh, rush, yeah. I mean, the Giants yeah. showed you what happens when you have a good pass rush and a shit ass secondary. They won a Super Bowl with it. Mm -hmm. Secondary wasn't good. They had one dude that was kind of okay back there, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a bad secondary, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you have a, a good secondary, it don't matter how good that secondary is. If your pass rush sucks, five seconds in, Deion Sanders is going to lose his man. Yeah. The way that works. Yeah. So, um. They they need to address that, and they're going to have to have a uh, an answer for Kamara, like you said, but more so for Rahid Shahid in the slot. They're going to have to have Cooper DeGene or um, or CJ or p different guys kind of rotate and make sure that you keep him out the game. I think that's that's the guy. Those seam routes um, in 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 Oakland, Hunter Renfro was the slot guy, and he was more of a short to intermediate guy. Um, yeah. but now Derek Carr, who has one of the strongest arms in the league, people kind of forget that he has, he might have the strongest arm in the league. People forget that he had a cannon coming out of Fresno State and he's showing it off. Now he's able to really let loose in his offense. And you're seeing he, he's not even always getting his feet set. He's launching that bitch and he's hitting guys in stride. And they're yeah. not pops are not meatballs. They're, they're got some good zip on it. So oh, yeah. They're going to have to make sure that they focus on the run. Everything starts from there. And then offensively, they're going to have to, um, I think, commit to the run. You want to get them stacking the box, and then you can start getting those one-on-ones with Smitty and um, Barkley on a linebacker. That would be the way I would go. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then obviously you can start getting Jahan Dotson one-on-one -on -one in the slot at times when he's not on the outside. So that, that's that's the way I, I would play it. Um, I think that the Eagles, um, I think that they'll win by two points. I think it's be it'll be a very close game. But I, it's a coin flip. I like I said, it's it's like the Cowboys and the the Ravens. I see the the Saints having a very very good shot at beating the Eagles at home if the Eagles cannot stop and establish the run. If they do one. At least one of those things, I think. Yeah. Even yeah. if they can't establish their own run game, if they stop them, obviously they'll win. If they yeah. establish their run game, even if they're not stopping the Saints, they're going to wear that Saints defense out. And that Saints offense, as good as it's playing, if you take out the quick hitters and you just make them have to go down the field using Kamara as like their Swiss Army knife and make them have these long drives that may or may not end in a field goal or interception or turnover, that's the way you beat this team because they're not – I think that maybe by the middle of the season we'll have a truer sense of what the Saints' offense is. And, but I think that they may need a little bit more time to really find their identity, even though I think they're explosive right now. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, they're um, yeah, they're clicking on all cylinders, man. They're just everything about them, like the offense, defense is flying around out there. It's um, you know, it's gonna be a tough matchup, and like you said, it could go either way. It's yeah. it's the same for me. I I feel like it's either to me, in my opinion, it can either be a blowout and we're gonna get killed, or if we actually, you know, I think if we stop the run, 
I think we can win that game. Like I think if you got to stop one of those elements that and we can we can take you know we can take over that game and we can win it you know i still even without aj it the matchup does scare me don't get me wrong but even without aj we still got smitty you still got some weapons out there you still got barkley to put them out there in space you just gotta you know play a clean good turnover free game and we'll be fine i completely agree um so that's that's our thoughts on that and then lastly you know briefly talk touching on the raiders because we're running out of time uh, Raiders at the the Panthers. I expect the Raiders to win this game because our defense is so much better this year. Max Crosby had two sacks on Lamar Jackson last week. He was on him. And I mentioned this in one of our previous videos that this Vegas defense is much better than I anticipated, particularly the secondary. So you have obviously Max Crosby, you got Mad Max, and then you have uh, Devon Diablo playing pretty solid linebacker, Trayvon Morig. Um, he's... We'll see how he is as the season goes along, but he's one of your first round picks from a few years ago. That's this is this is the guy you this is who you expect to be one of the leaders of your defense. And now you have him paired with Marcus Epps, who was a former Eagle, and now all of a sudden that secondary looks solid out of nowhere. Um, because he was there last year, but they I think as with any team, they were growing in the first year in the scheme. And now we're starting to see some of the fruits of the labor a little bit. And then um, offensively, um, we're able to do just enough. Um, Gardner Minshew is able to – he's doing some of the same things he was doing in Philly, managing the game, hitting guys in stride when they need to be, and just leaning on Devontae Adams and that run game. And then the Panthers, they'll, they'll be a little better with Bryce Young sitting down. He needed to get benched because I think that this situation just ain't going to work for him. But I don't think he's done, but he just needs a change of scenery and – a different situation, but um, they just don't have enough weapons right now um, on offense. They traded everybody away, and defensively, they're rebuilding. So we'll we'll see, but I have the Raiders winning this game. They are favored um, at home by six points, and I think they covered that spread in a low-scoring game, which Vegas is alluding to with the 39-and-a-half point total. So that's the wrap-up. Um, leave a like. And we'll catch you in the next one because time is running out. See you next time.